you're one of a million Americans like you. Me? Who doesn't know about England. I know about England. This video is for you. Oh, good Mistress Pansy. I could not have ridden faster. Four horses have I exhausted this day from nothing. I can scarce restrain the rushing of my feet. These twelve long years have been like chains that bound me. Oh. And the personal problem? Oh, much, much better. Oh, oh Pansy. No more worries now. Pansy. This image is of a horse that was made during the Neolithic Age, before the medieval period. It was made by scraping the topsoil and vegetation off the surface to reveal the chalk underneath. Henges are basically a simple bank and ditch enclosing an area of land. The bank is outside the ditch, so they would not have been defensive enclosures, but were more likely a form of religious and ceremonial gathering place. Most of them were built about 3,300 BC. The largest hinges enclose up to 12 hectares. Some, though not all, hinges have stone circles within them, while others show remains of wooden rings. The first phase of stone henge belongs to this class of monument, though it has now been overshadowed by the famous standing stones that were added at several later dates. Originally, most Neolithic tombs were made out of stone and looked a lot like this. Then, they became barrow mounds as soon as they were covered with earth. These are the most numerous of the prehistoric monuments that most people are likely to encounter. There are over 6,000 in the West Country alone. Though most of them are in the Bronze Age, this burial form remained used into the Iron Age and even appeared in the Medieval Ages. In the Neolithic Age, Rome conquered England and tried to civilize it because they viewed them as barbarians. Castles were originally small fortresses before the Romans came. After the collapse of Rome, castles began to get larger, mainly from protection against Saxon raiders. Still, the Roman Empire had influence on their design. This is an early castle for the Medieval Age. It clearly has a Roman design. At the height of the Medieval Ages, though, Gothic architecture reigned. This is a Gothic cathedral. It still has some resemblance to the early Roman type, but this one is more clearly evolved for the century. One thing that Rome still owned, as in England, was their Catholic religion. No, Rome didn't really own their beliefs, but it was the Romans who introduced Christianity to the region. A lot, if not all, art from this period depicts some Christian belief or story. Unlike what most people think, when people think of the Middle Ages, you know, people wallowing in mud and taking care of oxen, this period actually saw some major technological advances. This is including the invention of cannons, spectacles, gunpowder, silk, the compass, the astrolabe, and the clock. The clock is one of the most important pieces of this time period because evidently monks had to pray certain prayers during the different parts of the day and they needed a clock and we still use the clock today and I must say we don't have much use for an astrolabe <laughs> Thank you. 
In medieval England, a lot of the peasant boys would practice to become knights, because knights could hold property while peasants couldn't. That's why we're fighting with sticks. Another thing about medieval England was the distribution of wealth. Rich people were just way too stinking rich. Stinking rich. <laughs> Mads, here's the stinking rich. Stinking rich. Stinking rich. Yeah. Stinking rich. Yeah. Here's the Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Here's the Kevin. Stinking Kevin. And a lot of this wealth, well, let's just say, poor people wanted it just as much as the rich people. That's where a lot of the myths about Robin Hood came from. Those are our sort of people. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the rich, the nobles and kings and lords, the peasants had little room to move up in their society. They would mostly wear plain clothes and do a lot of the hard labor and were heavily taxed. Ma'am, sorry. What knight lives in that castle over there? I'm 37. Uh, what? I'm 37. I'm not old. Well, I can't just call you ma'am. Well, you could say Dennis. I didn't know you were called Dennis. Well, you didn't bother to find out, did you? I did say sorry about the old woman, but from behind you looked... What well, I object to is you automatically treat me like an inferior. Well, I am king. Oh, king, eh? Very nice. And how do you get that, eh? By exploiting the workers by hanging on to outdated imperialist dogma which perpetuates the economic and social differences in our society. If there's ever going to be any progress... Dennis, we've there's got... some lovely filth down here! Oh! How do you do? How do you do, good lady? I'm Arthur, King of the Britons. Whose castle is that? King of the who? The Britons. Who are the Britons? Well, we all are. We are all Britons. And I am your king. I didn't know we had a king. I thought we were an autonomous collective. You're fooling yourself. We're living in a dictatorship. A self-perpetuating autocracy in which the working classes... Oh, there get... you go, bringing class into it again. Well, that's what it's all about. If only people would... Please, feel... please, good people. I am in haste. Who lives in that castle? No one lives there. Then who is your lord? We don't have a lord. What? I told you. We're an anarcho-syndicalist commune. We take it in turns to act as a sort of executive officer for the week. Yes. But all the decisions of that officer have to be ratified at a special bi-weekly meeting. Yes, I see. By a civil majority in the case of purely internal affairs. Be quiet. But by a two-thirds majority in the case of more... Be quiet. I order you to be quiet. 